According to Exodus 32.19, it took Moses no time at all to destroy the set of stone tablets upon which God had inscribed the set of laws which have come to be known as the Ten Commandments. However, in Oklahoma, it takes a lawsuit, a decision by the state Supreme Court, an order from a second judge that it be done away with within 30 days, and a majority vote by the Capital Preservation Commission of the State Senate to accomplish the same task. Regular viewers of The Infidel will no doubt be familiar with the story of the monument to the Decalogue, which has illegally adorned the state capitol grounds since a private citizen raised the funds to have the granite embodiment of First Amendment violation installed there. In previous installments, we've reported on numerous changes to the display, including a group of Satanists who wish to erect their own statue of Baphomet in answer to the Ten Commandments exhibition, and an incident in which a drunk driver plowed through the State House grounds, toppling the statue. Finally, however, the display was removed in early October and moved to the grounds of the Oklahoma Council of Public Affairs, despite protests by some lawmakers, including Governor Mary Fallon, who has called for a constitutional amendment to override the extent Oklahoma Constitution's Article 2, Section 5, which reads in part, No public property shall ever be appropriated, applied, donated, or used directly or indirectly for the use, benefit, or support of any sect, church, denomination, or system of religion. Regular viewers of this channel are probably familiar with Mariam Namazi, the human rights campaigner and one of the hosts of Bread and Roses, a semi-regular podcast which is rebroadcast by the Atheism TV channel. Ms. Damazi, who fled Iran to escape fundamentalist persecution after the revolution in 1980, recently found herself the subject of controversy in Britain when her invitation to speak to the Atheist and Secularist Association at Warwick University was rescinded by the Students' Union, who feared she would incite hatred against the school's Muslim students. Namazi responded, saying, If people like me, who fled an Islamist regime, can't speak out against my opposition to the far-right Islamic movement, if I can't criticize Islam, that leaves very few options for me as a dissenter, because the only thing I have is my freedom of expression. She added, If anyone is inciting hatred, it's the Islamists who are threatening people like me just for deciding we want to be atheist, just because we don't want to toe the line. Namazi received support from such prominent organizations as the National Secular Society and such well-known public figures and academians as Dr. Brian Cox and Richard Dawkins, who tweeted, To ban a speaker you happen to disagree with is a contemptible betrayal of everything a university stands for. Apparently, the external pressure worked, as the student union has reversed its decision and issued an unequivocal apology to Namazi. The Freedom From Religion Foundation has turned its attention to a school in Fort Walton Beach, Florida, for conducting prayer events before school in violation of the American Constitution. The events, known as See You at the Poll, involve having students, presumably voluntarily, gather around a flagpole to pray. The contention of FFRF, after receiving complaints from a parent at the school, is that the events both ran past the beginning of school days and involve several adult school employees. Both of these conditions not only violate the Constitution, but likewise the CEO at the poll's own guidelines posted on their website. The website's Frequently Asked Questions section states that the organization got its start in Burleson, Texas, as a student-centered event. They address potential legal issues with the following statement taken from guidelines issued during the Clinton administration by the Secretary of Education. Students may also participate in before or after school events with religious content, such as see you at the flagpole gatherings, on the same terms as they may participate in other non-curriculum activities on school premises. School officials may neither discourage nor encourage participation in such an event. When someone complained to a school employee who was participating in the event, the person was told to argue with someone else, which was done because the case is now in the hands of the FFRF. This fact is just as interesting, considering that another piece of advice from the SYATP website is, see what the poll is about praying, not arguing about your legal rights. Somehow it seems that the, the, somehow it seems that the suggestion may have been misinterpreted.